Hi guys, my name is Coach Shadogs, the bottom Bob built for theme park news and welcome to a theme park newsroom update. Now, before we get started, I have three shout outs that I forgot. These guys requested the Portland's Park predictions video. We uploaded very late last night, going into midnight. Uh, so shout outs go to Alfie Elliott, Craig Cray for coasters and Nathan Grayson for that video suggestion. If you've got any other video suggestions, Leave them in the comments down below. We've got a whole host of videos that you guys suggested already. So I'm going to be doing the research on them, getting those videos out, get your shout outs in for them videos as well. And you guys are actually helping this channel through this lockdown period. You're actually helping a lot. Uh, now, obviously over the past couple of days we uploaded some great videos which I'm going to get on about at the end of the video because I want to discuss about the channel at the end of the video like I do most videos now. Uh, but... Before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Please share with your friends, your family, and on social media. And make sure you keep getting your questions in using the hashtag question before or after your question to celebrate 2,000 subscribers. That will be released when we hit that milestone. And for now guys, let's get into this video. So today is a news update on a potential new way for theme parks to reopen and how the queue lines may be abolished. Now this was a news article. Uh, I believe the news article website is called This Is Money or This Is For Money. I think it's This Is Money. Um, and I'm going to share with you all the details and then share my thoughts on what I think of the article. So let's have a look then at the latest from this article. So, the thrill seekers may never have to queue for white knuckle rides ever again as theme parks draw up plans for a safe reopening. Technology firm Accesso, whose clients include Thought Park and Alton Towers owner Millen Entertainment, is working on the rollout of a system that will let customers book time slots on rides via their mobile fo mobile phones. Mobile? Mobile phones. Uh, visitors to theme parks face the prospect of longer waits due to the need to space people out on rides and to allow time for extra cleaning. The technology will allow visitors to book digital tickets and to keep their place in virtual queues. The abolishing of physical lining up will help it to meet COVID-19 safety standards. Merlin, who also owns Madden Two Swords, already uses Accesso's queue smart system as a premium option at five of its 130 global attractions, including Legoland Windsor. Now, Accesso Chief Executive Steve Brown is working on a blueprint to make virtual queuing the only way for visitors to access rides. Last week, he signed a deal with the Wallaby Holland theme park in the Netherlands, owned by French ski resort, resort operator Compagnie des Alpes, to introduce virtual queuing. Brown says the technology could also help cruise ships, football stadiums and airport security to operate safely. Any attraction that draws large crowds will need to open in a socially distant way, he added. We are the technology version of the hand sanitizer. And that's actually an empowering statement to end that article right there. So that, my friends, is the article. Uh, now it's time to share my thoughts on that. So... Digital queuing, so having to book digital ride slots, uh, so you're not having to queue up, you can just walk right through the queue line uh, and onto the ride. Now, obviously, you know, not you know booking digital scare maze tickets, but you know going to scare mazes at certain times you know that's been you know that's been around for a couple of years now. So going to rides or mazes at certain times is not you know, nothing fancy, you know, uh, I believe the, uh, I think Disney do, uh, like, obviously they do, like, the extra ride time slots, so, like, the early morning ride time slots, uh, up until a certain time, so, obviously, working to different time periods is not a new norm for theme parks, but I think digital, digital queuing would be, and I think that this is going to be an interesting way of doing it, obviously, like I said, it would be longer to wait for your ride, because, of course, they're going to completely clean down the coaster train um, you know and things like that so obviously it's going to take a little bit longer however I do believe that if they want to sort of put a plan in place to reopen the theme parks by the end of this year going into 2021 I do personally believe that digital queuing would be the good way forward I think that even though it would be longer to wait for your ride I do believe personally that digital queues would be the new norm 
and I think that it's a way we could we could get used to for it for the next year or so. We could get used to it. Uh, now, of course, like we said, digital queuing would work. Basically, you book your your ride slot. I'm sure like the parks that do it, like Alton Towers, Thorpe Park, Chessington. I'm sure they'll release like a brand new Alton Towers digital queue booking app. Uh, or tell you to, you know, that one of the rules before you come to the park is to download the app, you know, before you come into the park. Um, you know, you can only get into the park if you have a digital booking app, or you can only get to, let's say, you can only get to Tower Street, and then you have to sort of book a, uh, you have to bring in a digital uh, ride queue booking app uh, for the rest of the park so because Tower Street hasn't really got any rides so I think the realistic thing for Alton Towers would be uh, you could only you know the furthest you can go in the park without booking uh, actual you know digital queue queue ride bookings and digital park tickets uh, is uh, you can, the furthest you can go is Tower Street really uh, so you can only you can, so basically there'll be security on hand so if you go past a certain point on Tower Street so let's say uh, past the frog fountains past the frog fountains so let's say you have extra security on guard to check that you have the the, the app basically for digital ride bookings uh, now of course for those of you who have phones uh, but you don't like to use data but you can't have you, you know if you if you're not logged on to the Wi-Fi and you you don't have uh, like any data left to use to download the app or you can't use the app at certain times uh, then you know it's going to be a bit difficult but I think if you have a digital system or to be fair what they could do is you contact them in advance if you wanted to and you get sent by delivery or you sort of kind of like football stadiums where you sort of if you want a pre-book ticket you sort of you know, you get your names, and then you go to the ticket office, and you say, "Yeah, you know, I'm looking for tickets. What's the what's the surname? Give them the surname. They get you tickets. Something like that would work very, very well. If you sort of book in advance, you can tell them your surname, uh, the let the the first name as well of the person that's buying the tickets for the for the whole group, uh, and then you go to uh, the box office, and you physically ha and and obviously the staff would be wearing gloves, but you get physically handed a sheet." Uh, where you've got uh, specific time slots that you may have suggested when booking the tickets in advance. Um, so you sort of say, I want. So when you're booking the tickets in advance before you get to the park, you sort of like, I want to ride this ride at this time, and this ride at this time, and this ride, you know, between the times here and here. Um, so I do believe personally that uh, that would be a way forward and I think it could be a way that works even if you're not booking in advance if you come to the park you sort of say you know hello I'm booking tickets for all four of us uh, and they sort of again via glove uh, the printout and they give you a, a sheet uh, with the time slots that you it, see so before you print it out you sort of tell them you know I want to ride this ride here here and here rest of them you know put them wherever you want wherever time slots you want uh, and then you sort of get like a, a sheet of paper uh, and you sort of like for example you get a sheet of paper that says uh, see BB's land from 10 a.m. till 11 a.m. or 10 a.m. till 10:30. Uh, all specific attractions between 10:30 and 10:45. You know, so in that 15 minutes, you have got 15 minutes to go through and ride, or you get, or you have to get the the next slot, or you get early access to the next slot. That kind of thing. So it would be a very difficult process, but it's not one that I don't think the parts can't work around. And I think it would be uh, a great way to work. I think that um, I think for vloggers, I think it would be a great way to uh, go through the queue lines without waiting. You know and waiting behind people in front of people um, obviously it won't be good for like still shots but I think if you've got a free Roman queue line to walk around and you sort of got like another five minutes to get into your slot I think you could take a couple of shots while you're in the queue line uh, before you put your bags in the baggage hold and of course the baggage holds they're gonna be improved of course I'm sure they're gonna be wearing gloves um, when giving you your wristband and things like that for your baggage hold like Alton Towers do uh, with the wristbands and the baggage hold definitely for Smiler uh, and I'm 
Rickshaw for thir and 13 as well, uh, and other rides too. So, you know, I think the baggage hold system is going to be greatly improved to accumulate the safety standards as well. Um, so there's a lot of things that they need to do to get the parks ready and meeting safety standards But I think that this digital queue idea with the rides and I think my theory on digital on digital queues and digital Park tickets uh, to save you having to actually go up physically to the box office and you know buy tickets hand in hand I think you know the only way you go to the box office is if you've either bought an advance and get a sheet of paper with the time slots for different rides or you go up and you want to buy a ticket on part you just say you know hi you know I'm buying on behalf of surname in the in the name of you know first name um, and you sort of give you preferences for any types of rides you know I want to do rides some certain rides before 12 o'clock etc etc uh, and of course those who book in advance are likely to be the first come first serve policy uh, reward benefits should we say um, you know, I think when compared to when you book in advance, I think if they do use the digital queuing system for park tickets as well as you know ride slots uh, and different ride bookings, I think it is first come first serve. Uh, and I do believe that if you don't you know book in advance or you don't book quicker than other people, then you are going to lose your slot, and there's a really good chance you have to ride it later, or you may not get a chance to ride it at all. Uh, I do think that the Alton Towers could potentially extend opening hours to allow more guests to. Uh, enjoy the rides that they maybe not have got if they stuck to the usual opening hours so maybe keep the park open an hour more than scheduled or a couple of hours more than scheduled uh, just to let people get more rides in uh, in their you know completed slots uh, so it's a very difficult process to get your head around but I think with my theories about park tickets digitalized uh, and this digital queue system for rides I think that it would be an overall good process to get used to uh, in the new norm shall we say and I personally believe that um, it will be the new normal for at least another year. I think we are going to try and get back to normal. I think you know, 2022, 2023 will be the time where we sort of start getting hopefully back to uh, the other normal and sort of keep in mind the new normal um, while we're going back to the old normal. Uh, so uh, it's going to be a very interesting process to decide what they do, but I think this is a very good idea, and I think parks should uh, have a look into that. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this theme park newsroom update. It's a very uh, long theme park news update, this one, uh, talking about these queue systems. Uh, but thank you very much, guys, for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe for more theme park content. A big shout-out, actually, to someone who is checking out the channel, um, Jack Silkstone. Um, he said he'd check the channel out. So uh, if you found it, Jack... Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Jack Silkstone. Uh, and I said I'd talk about the channel as well. Obviously, we've uploaded a couple of videos over the last couple of days. Uh, Polton's part, five-year predictions uh, at midnight um, last night. And, of course, uh, we did the first fact file of the series, uh, the, S the Speed Bob, Al Alt Mall Bob, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, and like I said, we've got loads of videos that people, video suggestions that people have sent in, prediction videos, top tens, uh, all these different types of videos. So uh, I'm really excited to uh, deliver all of that to you guys over the next few weeks. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this theme park news update. And for now, guys, keep on the coast of life. I'm Coast Chell, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.